With Birds of Prey coming out on digital soon, I've been thinking a lot about why I loved it so much. It was so refreshing to see a genuinely good comic book film from DC, who in my opinion have only ever released two other good movies. But then I started to wonder why I loved it so much, especially considering that it was based off of a character from one of my least favorite films of all time, Suicide Squad. Yes, there are obvious reasons why Birds of Prey is so much better than Suicide Squad. It literally and figuratively detaches itself from any affiliation with the film, took on a new and much better director and writers, and really embraced the chaotic nature of Harley Quinn. However, I believe the most interesting difference between the two films is the presence or absence of the male gaze. Before we get into this, it's important to define exactly what the so-called male gaze is. This term was coined by film critic Laura Mulvey in her 1975 essay, Visual Pleasure in Narrative Cinema, where she describes the male gaze as the act of portraying women from a heterosexual male point of view that presents women as a sexual object there for the pleasure of the male viewer. She states that the male gaze is from three perspectives, the man behind the camera, the men in the scene, and the men watching the film. When women are shot from the perspective of the male gaze, they are dehumanized and viewed as only objects of desire, beauty, and sex appeal, losing all of their agency and humanity. It does not present a woman as real, but rather as the idealized, sexualized version of the woman that is in a typical heterosexual male's head. Okay, okay, <laughs> enough with theory. We're here for Harley Quinn. Like I said before, there is an obvious difference in how Harley is presented in Suicide Squad versus Birds of Prey. During her first introduction in Suicide Squad alone, there are many instances of the male gaze. When they first show her as Harley and Quinzel, the camera stays at ground level and shows her legs and high heels before it even shows her face. A common attribute of the male gaze is to present a woman as just one part of her body. And in this instance, all we know about Harley is the way her legs look. Now let's compare this to a very similar shot in Birds of Prey. In this shot, on a technical level, we are seeing the same thing. The camera at ground level that shows off Harley's heels and then some of her legs. But what's the difference here? Why is a shot from Birds of Prey not considered to be from the male gaze? Well, the most obvious answer is that Suicide Squad was directed by a man and Birds of Prey was directed by a woman. But is it deeper than that? Let's take a closer look. In this short shot from Suicide Squad, the camera stays close to Harley's heels from a side angle, slowly moving up as she walks forward. The camera does move forward to follow her, but still keeps a considerable distance. The way this is shot fetishizes her appearance and takes its time to allow the ideal male viewer to soak in those super sexy legs. In a shot from Birds of Prey, the camera is directly behind Harley, moving at the same pace as her, and while it still moves up her legs, it is for a much shorter amount of time. It doesn't move up to emphasize her sexiness, it moves up to where the action will be taking place. The motive behind the camera movement is very different for each shot. It is also critical to note the difference between the costuming in these two shots. In Suicide Squad, Harley is wearing stilettos and a short dress that highlights her legs, and is what one would believe a typical heterosexual man would find sexy. However, in Birds of Prey, she is wearing unique clunky heels and a long overcoat, She's still dressed up in a nice fashion, but not in a way that makes her an object of male desire. In that same introduction scene from Suicide Squad, there's another shot that is obviously from the male gaze. While the two men are talking business in a club, Harley is in a glass box, dancing very sexually on a chain and is being admired by the men. She is there literally on display for the men to take pleasure in. She does not have agency, she is an object of desire for the men on and off screen. The camera starts off far away from her when she is moving her whole body, but then cuts to a medium close-up as she grinds on the chain. She is framed in a very sexual manner. She's looking over her shoulder with her bare back on display. There is another shot in Birds of Prey that is almost the exact same idea on paper. Harley pole dancing. However, this shot from Birds of Prey does not have the same sexualized viewpoint as the one from Suicide Squad. Harley is very obviously not dancing for the sole purpose of someone else's pleasure. She is dancing because she wants to. She is dancing because she thinks it's fun. Harley doesn't even hesitate to break the leg of the man who is sexualizing her. Harley has more agency and humanity than the whole scene from Suicide Squad, just because of the way that it is shot. 
Now for what I believe to be the most obvious instance of the male gaze in Suicide Squad. This scene checks off all the marks for what the traditional male gaze is. The man behind the camera is making Harley a purely sexual object as the camera moves up her mostly naked body, once again highlighting her legs, then her stomach, then her boobs, and then finally her face. This six second long shot allows the men viewing the film to soak in her sex appeal and view her as an object of their desire. In the next shot, we see all of the men in the scene. They're all staring at her, soaking her in allowing the heterosexual male viewer to be validated in the way that they are viewing Harley as an object and not a person. There's also the issue of costuming in this scene. She is wearing basically underwear with fishnet tights and a ratty t-shirt that claims her as daddy's little monster, making her defining feature that she belongs to another man, plus her ridiculous heels that she's expected to fight in. While the costuming itself is not inherently bad, the way it is presented and shot on screen only adds to the aspects of the male gaze in the film. Birds of Prey simply does not have these issues. Harley is never presented as an object of male desire through the camera. She still wears short shorts, crop tops, and heels, but because of the way she is viewed to the camera, there is no obvious sexual desire tied to these clothes. We, as a viewer, believe she wears them because it is what she wants to wear, not because it will please the men. Because we lost the male gaze in Birds of Prey, Harley is able to become a real person in the film. She has a personality and she has desires that are not linked to pleasing the heterosexual male viewer. Birds of Prey was initially met with backlash from some male fans, saying that the filmmakers were ruining Harley and taking away her sexiness. However, in this film, she is the most Harley Quinn she has ever been. The filmmakers did not take away her sexiness, she is still very attractive. I mean, it's Margot Robbie. But the camera does not hypersexualize her as it did in Suicide Squad. We get to see her as a real person, struggling through a breakup, crying over dropping a sandwich, and simply having fun with her friends. The reason why Birds of Prey was able to unlock the pure potential of this character is because it saw her as more than just a sexual object. And if your main complaint about this film is that she wasn't sexy enough, Maybe you should stop and think about how the male gaze has altered your view of women.